Right, OK. So in order to apply biodynamic preparations, you need specific equipment. And uh, like you, you need a sprayer. It needs to be prepared in a very particular way. So uh, I invested in uh, bespoke uh, biodynamic spraying equipment. And this is, uh, this is the sprayer. So you know, there's a couple of nozzles there and there. And these work like windscreen wipers. So they go from side to side. So we fill up the sprayer with the, with the prepared spray. And um, there's a, a pump in there. It, it, uh, it's quite, it's quite a, a, a good piece of equipment, this, in the sense that I can, uh, I can put it on a, on, a, um, on a set of wheels with the drawbar and pull it with the quad. So when the, when the weather is bad like it is at the moment and the ground conditions are bad, I can pull it with the quad. I can also put it on the back of my uh, pickup truck, uh, which is convenient for moving around the fields and it's comfortable. And then I can also put it on the back of the tractor. So when I'm going down the tram lines in the, in the cereal crops when they're tall, I, I, I'd have it on the tractor. So it's, it's great in that sense. And then there's two different actions in it. The one up here, uh, there's specific jets that give you large droplets. So those, those uh, nozzles give large droplets, which is what you want for the 500. Uh, the horn manure needs to go out in large droplets. It's a, it's a soil spray. So uh, we apply it in the afternoon using these. And then when we're applying the, the 501, which is the, the one that aids the photosynthesis, it's, a, it's an atmospheric spray. So I have other nozzles here that create a really fine mist. And I have a, a little engine on the, the bottom that runs a fan here that vaporizes it then. So the mist will come out either side and <coughs> then uh, it sort of settles in the atmosphere and uh, goes down onto the crop. So it was, it was very important when we were starting biodynamic spraying. Uh, like on a small scale, <coughs> you can do it by hand. You can use... Uh, you can use a, a paintbrush or you can use a, an ordinary knapsack sprayer, but on the scale that we're at for producing barley for water for distillery, we needed to be more mechanized than that. So that's why I invested in this. And before you actually put the spray into the sprayer, you have to prepare in a very specific way. So if we go into the other shed, I have the, um, the stirring equipment. So, uh, so uh, you'll have to excuse the mess. Uh, so I've two I've two biodynamic stirring instruments there, and I've uh, I've a stainless steel tank. So I collect rainwater and uh, store it in a stainless steel tank so that it keeps fresh and uh, it's important to, to have the best quality water you can for mixing the biodynamic preparations with so rainwater is probably the best I can get so I, I do generally use rainwater uh, and I store it in the, in the stainless steel tank so, so it keeps fresh the, then comes into a gas water heater so you, when you're mixing preps you want to have them, uh, the water in a rain uh, blood temperature so I'd like I think anywhere between 25 and 35 degrees 34 degrees I'd be happy enough with so if I hit around 27 28 degrees Celsius I'd be happy enough so we put it so this is a gas gas water heater it's a standard sort of household setup so we'll go from that into into the stirring instrument and these are copper copper vessels that are specifically made on a an Alex Podolinsky design. So Alex Podolinsky, uh, he uh, set up a systems along with uh, farmers in Australia as to how biodynamic uh, preps could be put over large areas. And uh, he designed these stern instruments. So in, before you actually apply the biodynamic preps, it's important to dynamize them. So you'll add 250 litres of the water in, then you add your your preps so with with the 500 with the horn manure we're using 100 grams per hectare 
so this this will this vessel do will do seven hectares so we'll put 700 grams of 500 in it for and then you stir it for an hour and the way it works is there's um there's vacuum switches on it and there's a there's a motor here with the belt and it'll twist these around and uh, as the, the they'll go around quite quickly and as they go around they create a vortex and the vortex will go down to about there so there's a good deep vortex and when the vortex reaches the full depth then you the the vacuum switch makes it go the other way so it creates chaos and uh, there's laminar flow within the water and the um the uh the preparations get dynamized within the water as you turn the other way creates a vortex and then it breaks that vortex as well and it does that rhythmically for for an hour and then it's dynamized and ready to be applied on the the land so you can also do that by hand in a bucket <laughs> but on the scale we're doing it, it wouldn't be very practical so it, uh, as a starting point for me on the biodynamic journey we've been on it was important to get the the equipment right so that so that it was doable and manageable you know to cover large areas reasonably quickly so we can get you know we can get a, a decent few hectares done each day like and that's why i have two stirring instruments is to get through as, as many hectares as possible you know it doesn't have to be copper it could be it could be timber okay. but copper is is best mm -hmm. so so when i when i was getting and it and it lasts well and it, you know it, it works the best so when i was getting them that's what i got but you could use a timber and you could even use a plastic bucket you know the important thing is to have good preparations yeah. so the, that the stuff that you're putting in there is is good is important i wouldn't use a galvanized bucket because uh, the zinc in the galvanized bucket has a, a negative effect on it yeah but um but copper timber or plastic it starts out in copper and then we distill it you yeah it's kind of cool all right isn't it yeah 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 when you think about it yeah. Goes full circle. Yeah. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the whiskey we have here now, and then we'll talk about cow horns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the whiskey you're drinking now is our first biodynamic release. So it would have been from the first crop year that um, uh, that Trevor and Alan, John McDonald, hmm. three three were the core biodynamic growers. So at that time, biodynamic barley yields very poorly. So it doesn't yield as well as conventional barley. So we had to get the three guys to bring their the barley together and we were successful in the first year 2018 i think was the first 17 17, 17 was the first year we grew it first grown year yeah, yeah. And 18 the first distillation year mm. so what we did then is we got the three guys to bring their barley together from the three different biodynamic um, farms we got about 40 40 ton of grain combined with the three guys mm. all right that wouldn't be a full batch a full batch for water distillery from a, for a single grower would be around 75 ton all right with the three guys together we made up around 40 45 ton that allowed us then to distill approximately um 20 000 liters of spirit from the first year's um biodynamic batch and as we do with every single farm we put the spirit from the from the guys um barley into, into four different types of wood so first fill us uh virgin us French oak and VDN, sweet wine, sherry cask. We put the four together, and this is the biodynamic single malt whiskey from the four different types of wood put together. All right, so thanks to the guys for the starting the project and the journey with us. And I think Trevor, every year it's got better and better. Mm. What we did in the background then is the guys were growing conventional varieties of barley to begin with, all right? So to give ourselves the best chance of getting a successful crop, the guys agreed to grow using the, the conventional varieties of barley that are um, available to us. But I think he weren't overly happy to, to grow those varieties. He yeah. wanted, a mo um, I suppose, a variety that lended more traditional, traditionally to the, to the methods the guys use of biodynamic growing. So what we did, we had a side project where we were growing old heritage varieties of barley. And we were growing them using conventional techniques. So. I think we, we brought the two projects together and we asked the guys, look, would you be interested in growing the old heritage variety? So two years ago, they grew using the hunter variety, which is, was the most modern of the heritage varieties. And you grew that mm. successfully two years ago. That's right, yeah. Distilled last year. Yeah. And this is going to be your third year of growing 
Grown a hunter. heritage variety using biodynamic techniques. Hmm. So the two projects came together. That's hunter, now. Yeah. That's the hunter variety now, is it? Yeah. That's the seed, yeah. That's the seed, yeah. Ready to go into the ground okay. for 2023's season. So it's going to be very, very um, interesting when we release a biodynamic single malt whiskey using old heritage varieties. That will come next year, all right? Next, next, next year, year it'll be three years. Well, it'll be ready next be re year. Be ready next year, yeah. Mm. So that's going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. And I think you're more happier growing the older varieties. Oh, we are, yeah. Yeah, we sort of covered, we discussed that earlier, you know, the, yeah. the, the way the older variety works with the soil and yes, it's, it's more designed. Yeah. Do you want to talk about cow horns now and their okay. influence into it? So, uh, so um, the, the two major preparations we use, there is, there is other preps we use for, um, for the compost, but uh, to keep it straightforward, <coughs> what we use is BD500 and BD501, and 500 is horn manure and 501 is horn silica and the reason it has the name is because the horn is central to uh, the making of the preparation so the way we make uh, bd500 is uh, we take <coughs> take manure from a lactating cow in uh, the autumn and we put it into a horn and we bury it in good quality soil for the for the winter and we'll dig them up in sort of late april early May. So they go into the ground in September, October, and they'll come out of the ground late April, early May. And then we, uh, we store it in a peat line box to protect it from any radio waves or any, uh, any interaction with our contamination with other stuff. And once it's stored for a couple of months, then it's ready for ready for spraying. Do you store it as a oh, we take it out of the horns and we store it in a, in a, 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 a vessel uh, uh, an enamel vessel and how many of them okay so uh i have buried up to about uh seven i buried 700 horns one year but that was sort of to get me started so i wanted to uh it's a bit like a it's a bit like a wine or a, a whiskey maturing in the sense that uh the 500 will mature in storage and will improve uh each year so I prefer to be spraying uh, horn horn manure that I that I made two years ago than that I made last year, so I want I I sort of wanted a, a good starting point, and uh, but uh, uh, each horn will do, I'd say like you'd, you'd get eighty to hundred grams, maybe more depending on the size of the horn. So hundred grams does a hectare, so you sort of figure out how many hectares you have to do and then multiply it up by how many horns you have to bury. Like some horns would be very small and you wouldn't get a hectare out of it, and other ones would be big, you'd get more than a hectare out of it. So, so it's about how many, uh, how many hectares you have to cover. And um, I'm also spraying for other farmers, so I wanted to have a bit extra for them as well, you know. And prior to that, I've, I've been using imported horn manure from, uh, from uh, Biodynamic Services. It's a, a company in France that produced their 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 sole purpose is producing biodynamic pre preparations. It's run by a, a chap called Vincent Masson, and uh, like he's shipping uh, biodynamic preparations all over Europe. He, he's burying anything <coughs> anything in the region of uh, fifty sixty thousand horns every year, and uh, he has it very specialised. And <coughs> you, I I know I've been asked before why would you use a horn. Like why not? Why is it specifically a horn on it? Uh, it's it. This is where it gets a little bit more um, dif difficult to grasp, I suppose. It's about the way that the horn concentrates the energy that's within the soil and the energy that's coming from the cosmos on the manure that's within it, and that's a, a difficult thing to grasp in a way. But if you put one of those horns to your ear, you'll sort of hear. And I, I suggest you should put one of the horns to your ear, and you'll, you'll hear the the uh you'll hear the way the air is moving in it and the way the energy is moving in it like and it's it, it if you had a box put to your ear it wouldn't be the same you know it's it's like putting a seashell to your ear it's a similar sort of you'll, you'll hear a similar sort of sound you know and um that's why we use a horn is is because of the way it focuses the energy and it's the horn from a a, a cow 
and the manure from a cow. So we're bringing the two of them together.